In this simple video, we're going to take a look at how to test our project that uses GraphQL, React, and Apollo clients. So we're going to first begin to test our React project with the queries and mutations. Then we're going to take a look at how to unit test our data that we have stored inside of our in-memory cache. Then we're going to add testing to our GraphQL server. So obviously for server side, we can be able to add unit testing, our integration test. But for this video specifically, we're going to focus on how to add end-to-end -end testing for our server and be able to send requests and validate the response. And of course, if you're interested in more content like this, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video. And the timestamp of this video is in the description below. So feel free to jump to any section you like. And if so far sounds interesting, let's get started. First, we're going to take a look at how to unit test our graphical queries with Apollo client inside of our React project. And for demonstration purpose, here you can see we, inside of our React project, we have a doc component. And inside of this doc component, you can see that we're sending a query to our graphical server which in this case, a get.query takes the name and it will basically return the ID, name, and breed. And here you can see we're getting the loading, error, and data. And then for testing here, you can see the way how it works is that we're importing the mock provider from the Apollo client, which we can be able to mock the request and response inside of our component. And you can see here the way how we use it is we wrap the component around the mock provider and we pass the mocks. And here you can see the mocks is an array of objects and each object has the request and the result. And for the request, we basically specified that this is the query and this is the variables that we're going to uh, mock. And then for the results, we're going to say that this is the data that we're going to mock. And once we mock the response, the component will expect to have the data display and render on a page. And you can see the test pass on that one. And then here you can see, I also do the screen.debug, which we can be able to see the full log of the page. And if we were to click on the console, you can see that this is what we have. So we have our body, div, paragraph, and we have the text. And of course, we can also be able to return an error. So for example, an error occurred. And then if we look at our component here, um, if there is an error, then we're going to display the error message on the page. And if I were to put a screen.debug here, you can see that we do see that an error occurred display on the page and you can see the test pass on that. And now we're going to take a look at how to unit test our mutations inside of our React project with Apollo client. So here you can see inside of our component uh, delete dog, we have a delete mutation. So we're going to pass the parameters. And in this case, this query uh, or this mutation will expect the ID name and breed as a response. So here you can see for the use mutation, we're going to use this delete dog mutation and we're going to have a button which trigger the mutate and pass the variable buck. And this will basically provide us the loading, error, and data. And this data is going to be what we requested inside of the mutation, which is ID, name, and breed. And if this data exists, then it shows that this data is already deleted. And you can see back to our test, we first define the request. And this is the query, this is the variables that we're going to pass in. And this is the response, or this is the result uh, for this query. So basically what it means is that if the component um, sends this query or mutation with its variables, then this is the data that we're going to send back. We're not going to send any requests to GraphQL server. We're just going to mock that. So this is the result that we're going to mock. And then what's going to happen is that uh, once this data is returned, we're going to see if the deleted is shows on the page, right? Because if we look at our component, uh, if the data is deleted successful, then this data will exist, then this will be true and we will show the deleted text on the page. All right, so now let's focus on how we can be able to add testing for our in-memory cache for the Apollo client. So in the previous video, we learned about how we can be able to update our cache after we send a mutation. And we can also be able to test that inside of our unit test. So the way how it works here is that you can see we have our update function and this update function takes the cache as well as the data that we sent. And then we basically first read what we have inside of our cache with the query and the parameters. And if the data exists, then what we're gonna do is we're going to write our cache or update our cache. And you can see here that we're basically setting the ID name breed to empty for the query and the variables. So if I were to show you, you can see that if I were to click on this delete button and you can see that the name and breed are empty. Um, and instead of the testing, you can see that we first created an instance of the in-memory cache. And then we're going to write some data inside of the cache. And then you can see that we're setting the mocks for the request and the response. And then for the mock provider, we're just going to pass the cache. And then below here, you can see we're going to trigger some actions. And then we're going to see if it has loading and deleted display on the page. And then we can also be able to check to see if the data has been deleted inside of a cache. So we first read the data and then we're going to check to see if the cache data has the empty doc object. 
All right, so lastly, we're gonna take a look at how to test our GraphQL server with end-to-end -end testing by creating the server and be able to send requests to test the result. So to demonstrate this, so here you can see I have a simple server, and if we were to navigate to the uh, playground, you can see that if I were to send this query, it will get basically give me the data, right? So if I were to change this to Tim, send a request, you can see that this is the data that we're getting. And here you can see we have our code. And basically, uh, you can see here we have our type definition and the resolvers. And then we use that to create the server. And then once we have the server, we're going to get the URL by using the start standalone server function. We pass the server and the listen options. And once we have our URL and the server, we're going to use that inside of our server.test. And here you can see we define the query data. And then here you can see before each test, we setting the server and the URL variables. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call the URL and then send a query request. And then once we have the response, we're going to do some validations. And after the test is completed, we can be able to use the server.stop to stop the server.